We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. Hello, lovelies. Today we're having a bit of a retrospective on Palladium's Robotech role-playing game. A little bit of background is is necessary here, uh, describing my relationship uh, with Robotech as a as a property. Um, we were the first people I knew to get a satellite dish, and I'm not talking Sky TV or even uh, the days of the square reel. Uh, I mean, before that, this thing was huge. It was like an enormous wok that could feed an entire neighborhood. Um, and Sky didn't exist at the time. Uh, we were tuned into UTELSAT, which was European satellite television. A lot of German channels with softcore pornography on them quite often, and the hilarious German dub of Star Trek The Next Generation, which was worth a watch even if you didn't speak much German, just for the sheer amusement factor. Um, but there were a couple of English-speaking channels, and one of them had like a Saturday morning cartoon slot called Roustabout, where I would watch things like Robotech and uh, the original Voltron, and all of that kind of stuff. Jason, the Wheeled Warriors. Of course, no one else knew what the fuck I was on about uh, because no one else got to see these cartoons. So I might well have just been making them up. And I remember enthusing about Robotech, not knowing any better. You know, this was called Japanimation back then, not, not anime. Um, so when I actually managed to get hold of a book <laughs> based on the series... Uh, that kind of legitimised that I wasn't making this shit up. Um, my favourite series of the Robotech series was the Invid Invasion. Uh, you will note, conspicuous by its absence, is Southern Cross, which was rubbish, largely because the Mecha were rubbish. Um, important in the weird story that they cobbled together for Robotech between the various series, which were all unrelated. Uh, but still, so you had what, Matt Cross, I don't know what Southern Cross was based on, and then Invid Invasion was Mospeda. Um But yeah, Transforming Bike Maker are cool. So, yeah, and I, looking back, I have fond memories of playing, or probably more accurately, attempting to play Robotech. Um, but of course, it's a Palladium game, so immediately... <laughs> Unless you're a uh, unless you're a fan, uh, you can see the problem, um, because for a great many years, Palladium refused to revise or change their rules in any significant way, or to allow their properties to be converted to anything else. And Palladium properties, like Rifts, for example, are one of the few things that would actually have benefited from being converted to D20. But hey ho. Uh, it wasn't wasn't to be. Um, so I decided to do a retrospective on these, and then I reread them, and uh, it kind of spoiled part of my childhood to reread these books, because, well, you know, it's it's the Palladium system. The Palladium system is not a good system. It does not replicate the frenetic and kinetic nature. Um, of action anime in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's very much a square peg in a round hole here. And so much of this book is system. So much of it appears to be stuff that Palladium just sort of, of made up. <laughs> Which I guess is fair, uh, given the lineage um, but even so, yeah, I remember poring over the details of this like it was, you know, truly legitimate. Um, because I was I was thirsty for additional lore on Robotech, um, and this hardly has any of that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is 
you know, it's only, uh, what is it? Barely over a hundred page book. Um, and so much of it is repetition of the Palladium rules. Um, and then the game statistics are of the mecha. The lore uh, is quite scant and spread throughout the book and not in any particularly well-ordered sort of way. So you get a bit of blurb here on the history of the Veritex transformable fighter, but not that much, really, to be honest. Um, and you get a kind of state of the world, but you never really get a full-on explanation of, of everything. Uh, some of these mecha will be familiar to players of Battletech, and that's a whole other story <laughs> which we won't get into. Uh, what's Warhammer, Archer? Don't think that was ever converted to Battletech. May have been, but I don't remember. Rifleman might be familiar with. I uh, don't think the Spartan was ever converted to Battletech, but yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, it's it's a lot of tech it's a lot of game stats for things that you probably aren't going to end up using most of the time um, a lot of what is essentially wasted space uh, and a system that doesn't suit the setting at all um, which obviously was a bit of a problem so you do get a bit of lore but it's in the form of these essays and it's not exactly expansive and it's not well ordered and it's not well organized at all um, which is deeply disappointing so I didn't remember this uh, looking back I remembered it very fondly but looking back at it now especially in the wake of the MERP review they just didn't seem to think that you needed the law information and the background and so on back then. I guess it was assumed that if you were going to play the Robotech role-playing game, you had watched the series, uh, and so you didn't need all that bump and information. All you needed was game rules for your favourite system, or in this case uh, the Palladium system. It's unfortunate. Um, so yeah, Invid, Mosbeda, uh, that was my particular jam. I loved this series more than any of the others uh, and I, I spit upon Southern Cross for being trash. Um, the Invid were just much more interesting, much more alien. They were still mecha but they were kind of organic and they had cobbled together this story um, that spanned all the different series but it was the, the cyclone bikes that were just just fantastic. You know, all the bigger mecha had been destroyed, and so you were playing, or the, the main characters were in the series, guerrilla fighters who were doing, you know, sort of rapid strikes um, and then escaping as best they could. And the bikes allowed them to move somewhat clandestinely. Um, and they were just much more interesting and um, and personal seeming to me than the than the bigger mecha though the series did briefly have much more interesting larger mecha in it as well um, but again it's rules 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 and not a great deal of law information which again was something I would have very much preferred to have had, um, but it's just not—it's just not really present. Um, and again, I think that's because, in the kind of older way that we used to look at games, I just—I don't think easily referenceable and deep lore, you know, kind of technical manual sort of stuff was um, the thing to go for. And to be fair to Palladium, their jam has always been producing relatively cheap books that you could relatively easily afford to buy. 
um, that's a large part of why their process and their layout and so on has, has barely changed over the years um, or had barely changed over the years and why they stuck to everything uh, being, just being the same. They wanted everything to be cross compatible to an extent. So in theory, you can just take this shit and plug it into rifts if you want or vice versa if you wanted some additional mecha of different types. But yeah, it's just disappointing that there wasn't more law and information. You get a state of the world, but you don't really get any major revelations or anything, um, any particularly interesting in-depth looks at any of the law or anything. So yeah, I've kind of yeah, ruined my childhood by looking back because I remember it fondly, but that was nothing to do with the Palladium system, which is and remains awful. <laughs> sorry, sorry if you're a fan, but it's just not good. It's uh, like if Frankenstein had been assembled from the various creations of a kindergarten class playing with Play-Doh. Um, yeah, not good. Um, and the books just don't contain the information that I would have liked, the sort of more in-depth look at the lore. Uh, the Invid book is, what, yeah, again, about 110 pages. Um, when was this made? 88, this edition. So that you would think, actually, going into the late 80s, into the early 90s, that uh, production value and, and the kind of content that you would find in the books was was changing by then, but not for Palladium, where time stands still. <laughs> um, but plus sides, definite. There are some definite plus sides. Palladium, as almost always in the past, has fantastic, strong, bold line art um, in its books, which, despite being black and white, I think completely puts to shame a lot of the artwork and a lot of other um, modern books. It's either dynamic or technical and illustrative. Um, it's effective. You just, you don't really see art like this anymore in books. And I think that's a, that's a huge shame. Um, I mean, the, the mecha illustrations and so on are just um, are wonderful. They don't quite crack the anime style um, on these things, so I don't know why they didn't just use contact sheets and things for that. Um, but when it comes to the mecha, you know, you see that and you want to play it. Um, it's just a shame. Just a shame it's the Palladium system. Same with Rifts. So that's a positive to call out. Uh, you know, and it was what there was. Um, the, I have looked at the newer Robotech game. I don't own a copy, but I've flipped through a copy, and I think that goes too far the other way into abstraction and story game type rules, whereas this goes too far the other way in that it's highly detailed and technical, but it's highly detailed and technical in the Palladium way, which I just, I just don't enjoy. Uh, if I were reviewing this, um, these books, I mean, style, I mean, the artwork is striking. The writing style is very dry, um, like a school essay forced at gunpoint. It's, uh, it, it's not engaging, but the sheer value of the artwork in both books, I think, brings the score up to a, an overall three average for style. In terms of substance, I mean, you've got all the rules in the books, but why not just keep the rules in the first book of the series and then use the extra space for more lore and so on in the later books? I don't know. Doesn't contain enough lore and information. Um, so in terms of substance, its only virtue is that it was the only thing that a lot of us could get <laughs> that, that related to this at all so substance two so that's only 
uh, a 5 out of 10 or a 2.5 out of 5. Only really, I would say, for the collectors out there. And I don't hold out too much hope of um, any more newer Robotech RPG books being any good either after what I've seen. Disappointing. Childhood ruined. Ah, oh, well. Moving on. I have a woefully undersubscribed subreddit, so please do me a favour, if you're a Redditor, head on over to r slash postmortem studios and talk about anything related to any of my shenanigans. Peace.